Cape Elizabeth um, School Board meeting, Tuesday, February 10th, uh, 2004. If we could rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, we do have one adjustment to the agenda tonight, um, and that is under new business, we will move um, the consideration of a request for a high school government class trip um, after recognition. And let me see, uh, approval of the January uh, school board minutes. Um, actually, I noticed on the minutes that they say December 2004 and have a date of December 13th. I did correct that on the official minutes. I, I had just run them off before I sent them out. But okay. on the official minutes, they're correct. Okay, okay. Um, so can we have a motion to um, approve the January school board minutes? The only one little thing is, I know it's a ongoing question, is the name of the communication committee. Is it communications? It's just, it's, it's not consistent. If it's a communication committee or communications, I, I don't care. I think, I think we decide communication. Okay. Without an S. Okay. I will. Without an S. Okay. Is there anything else? Can I have a motion from someone to accept these minutes? So moved. Okay. And Kevin, second. second. Okay. All those in favor? Seven zero. Um, and now comments from our high school students. Michael Harris, a senior. Um, last week we had a winter fest, and it's still continuing on because of some absentees of the faculty. But uh, we had many fun competitions, including a poker tournament for no money, a five-on-five -five socks and mittens basketball game, a uh, trivia pursuit, and uh, we're having an ice hockey match this Thursday. Uh, the sophomore class is in the lead, but it's currently undecided because of the future activities. Um, also, uh, the school has been blessed with the guest speaker of Governor Baldacci. He's coming Thursday, and he will be speaking to the, the entire class. Uh, yesterday, Ex-Governor Angus King spoke about socioeconomic uh, problems in Maine and attracting businesses and the importance of education in business. Uh, students uh, look forward to their uh, trips. There's a trip to France, as you know. Uh, I think they'll leave on Thursday. A trip to Italy and Greece in April, and if all goes well, a trip to Washington, D.C. soon. And the seniors did uh, manage to get the STP forms done for uh, last week, <laughs> barely. And the initial proposals will be sent to a STP committee where they will be reviewed and sent back to the students. Were there any questions? Any questions? Are the faculty playing hockey? <laughs> or is it just students? I, I think there's an effort to, to get a faculty team. I'm not sure if it's if that happens, would you call me? <laughs> In the past month, students at the high school have transitioned from the first semester to the second and enjoyed four days' worth of midterms. Though midterms are challenging, I've noticed that the pressure is often alleviated when people study in groups, and these little study gatherings seem to crop up quite often. The change in schedule with tests over by 12 noon was also a good part of the midterm process. First semester report cards went home with the students last week. Students are now involved with second semester electives, which means that half year classes have changed and many students are now studying economics, ceramics, or contemporary issues. There have been a few complaints about library usage and the availability of a space to meet in small groups to work on homework or use computers, as the library is often booked for classes. A record number of juniors, which I think Mr. Shedd mentioned um, in December, 
have freeze, at least before the second quarter grades. And they were, it we should have been able to, to go to the library during their free, but actually didn't find that option available. I'm not aware if the renovation plans include any change to the library space. And the only other concerns I've heard are about parking tickets in the senior lot. And I think that's probably because people have been parking illegally on the grass. Um, the Student Advisory Council will be meeting tomorrow. There will be a school-wide assembly with Governor Baldacci on Thursday. And um, my government class, as well as Mr. Ely's economic class, met with former uh, Governor Angus King. Mr. King was very lucid and dynamic in his presentation about business in Maine and economic growth. And we are grateful to Mr. Jordan for arranging these visits and are also hoping that the school board will approve the trip to Washington, D.C. that he has proposed for us. Um, extracurriculars are, going, are continuing and the theaters one act will be presented in March. The sports teams are performing well. Boys basketball has a game tomorrow versus Poland that will determine whether they play in Augusta on Saturday. Girls basketball has, wrap, has already wrapped up a tenacious season. The girls swim team won Southwesterns and the boys placed fifth and both teams will be swimming at the state championships on Saturday. The boys' hockey team is very strong and should remain so, with a roster peppered with aggressive young skaters. They play Thursday against Yarmouth, a team which they lost to in a close fight in January. I went to that game and remember feeling that as fans, the Capers are very unified in support of the team. I think that our school spirit is really in evidence during hockey games. In other news, the accreditation process seems to be going well, and the feedback forms were sent home with every student's report card. Thank you. Okay. Are there questions or comments? I just had a question. What happened to the caffeine in the schools issue? What, what, the I'm, soda? Not really, I'm not a soda drinker, so I'm not really sure. I well, don't let's get the one who's kind of there. buzzed here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think uh, nothing's really been done with it, but I think seniors are just going to the IGA now, buying their caffeine yeah. elsewhere. <laughs> they can't buy it here; they'll just buy it elsewhere. But um, I, I think people, people just get used to it. Okay. I think there was a proposal um, presented to the staff um, by Mr. Shedd, and then they'll be um, deliberating over that. And the SAC meeting is tomorrow, so as a group, the kids who've been elected um, will be probably discussing that and will be updated on that. But as of right now, I don't think the policy's changed. There's no soda in the cafeteria. And actually, it's kind of funny, some of the extracurricular groups are trying to sell soda in cups as a way of fundraising, um, along with bake sales. I don't know how that works. Beat the addiction. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? OK. Um, Kevin and Nora from the middle school. Um, there's not much to report from fifth grade. Students made valentines for veterans at Togus Hospital and other nursing homes. Students also made valentines and created current events letters for soldiers in Iraq. Terry White starts meeting with the fifth grade band students this week. He meets with them at recess time on Tuesdays for 30 minutes. Yet he is able to bring together a musical group for the May concert. The seventh grade team leader, Aaron Filio, would like to recognize the seventh grade student artwork done in Ms. Van Wine's classes. Also, seventh grade Spanish and French classes are making bilingual Valentine cards for different hospitals. Cross country skiing has almost come to an end. Championships are this weekend. CAPE is sending seven girls and seven boys in classic and skate. Indoor track just started yesterday and swim sign up middle school swim team sign-ups came out yesterday. The coat drive went very well. The homeless shelters were very thankful. Um, the dance that was supposed to happen on the 6th was postponed due to the bad weather. The variety show went great. There were many talented performers and everyone had a great time. Also recently, sign-ups for the Wonder Years were filled out by the students. The Wonder Years will be on March 5th. Hi, I'm Kevin Johnson. Nora pretty much covered most of it. But um, the school musical Bye Bye Birdie is going, and they're off to a great start. And it seems, too, that everyone's having fun. The speech and debate team is just finishing up, and they're 
season ends this week. The girls' basketball is underway, and even though they're not the greatest team in the world, they're having fun, and people are showing up to the games. And the indoor track team has a record-breaking 144 runners this year, and the coaches and runners are excited for the season. The MEA practice testing for the eighth grade. We have a session to practice, and not all the eighth graders got connected, but hopefully it was a good first try and hopefully the future sessions will go smoothly. Career day was a good experience, and even though a lot of students weren't happy with their choices, they will probably get over it. <laughs> <laughs> all in all, students are anxiously waiting for February break, the second trimester to end, and warm weather to come our way. Okay, are there any questions or comments for uh, Kevin or Nora? Kevin? Um, I'd like to thank you for what you're doing for the soldiers in Iraq, remind you that there are soldiers in Afghanistan. Speaking from personal experience, I can tell you they are deeply, deeply appreciative of any word they get from home. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now we will move on to um, communications, and I think Tom has a few. Um. You do have letters from teachers that are currently on leaves that will be uh, letting us know about their intention to return, but I would like to make mention of the letter um, that talks about the update on the priority three status. If you recall, with uh, the revolving school renovation from, from the state, we are uh, looking to receive some funds, if we can, from the state uh, for the renovation, the new building actually at Pond Cove. And this is what this is referring to. And they will be doing a site visit and, um, and to take a look at our project just to verify what we put in our application. And hopefully shortly thereafter, we'll find out whether we are going to receive any money from that particular, for that revolving renovation fund. Tom? Is that? Oh. I'm sorry. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Um, is that for Pine Cove or the high school if it's a renovation fund? Um, priority three is for um, issues that deal with prog that are program issues. So that's something. Remember, we talked about um, the revolving renovation fund expanded this year to include um, issues that have to do with uh, that are program related, and the kindergarten obviously is a program related issue. So we applied for that. So. So it is. We also are going to apply for the high school, but that comes later. Oh, okay. Thank you, Jennifer. Tom, what's the date that? Um, teachers on leave have to notify us. About return? I think it's February 15th, February 15th, February 1st. Okay. Um, did you want to talk about the uh, election coming up? Do we have the notification for the town clerk? Did you no, say that? Well, just that, that, that there is notification about the election and the deadlines for that in your pack. Um, um, one more question. Do we have more out on leave than what we... We actually, uh, Mary um, contacted all of those to, as a reminder that they needed to get back to us. So I think we've heard from all but one. All but one. Okay, so we, we get one. Okay, okay. Um, and we, we did receive in our packet a notification from the town clerk re regarding the um, election on May 4th. And I would like to suggest that we have a uh, meeting for potential school board candidates, as we did last year, um, where we had, I, I think it was, three school board members, and we had people who were interested um, in running for school board come to that meeting. Um, is there anyone who would like to um, be in charge of uh, arranging that and setting a date? pulling that together? Because I, I think it, it's coming up quickly, and we probably should do it before the end of February. Papers are due back in on March 19th. Kevin, you'll take care of that? Yes, I will. OK, thank you. Um, and comments from the public? We have none. OK. Um, recognition. Tonight we have um, Janet McLaughlin here um, with a presentation um, from, a, from Augusta, a legislative sentiment for um, 
two of our people, Bev Bisbee and Gary Lenoy, who have done work on the Milty Laptop Initiative. Um, Janet? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Pleasure to be here this evening. Bring you greetings from Augusta, where there still is no money. <laughs> I was, it was great to hear the comments from the students, both from the middle school and the high school, and with the high school having the visitations from Governor King and Governor Baldacci. Grill him. <laughs> he enjoys it, believe me. Uh, he's an, a terrific fellow to work with in the State House. And don't make him laugh too hard because his ribs still healing. But I was in a meeting with him yesterday with another group, and he seems to be in good physical shape, but I think he's hiding a few of his injuries from us very nicely. But I, since I get the microphone for a minute, I just want to commend the high school program that allows the students to have speakers of this caliber in the state. It's really marvelous, and Mr. Jordan does a fine job with them, and he's very well respected in the halls in Augusta as well, and speaks well of our community, which is always a pleasure for us. I've already had a couple of questions. What is a legislative sentiment? And that, that was a good reminder to me to say, oh, you know, I, we get caught up in our jargon. I think all of us do in our different, the hat, different hats that we wear. A legislative sentiment is a recognition from the legislature of something of import, either local import or statewide import. And I thought this fit both of those. It's local and it's statewide. Because I first read about what Mr. Lenoy and Ms. Bisbee have done in a newspaper article, because it was a gathering in Gorham, I believe, and it talked about how they had worked with the student I-teams, in fact, had come up with the name I-teams and all, thought it was a wonderful concept, and especially since it's related to the state laptop program. So, if you two would come up and join me, and Senator Bromley, Representative Bliss, send their greetings. They had other commitments this evening, and part of it was I'd forgotten to tell them until this morning that this was <laughs> happening. So, But they would have been here if I told them early enough to get it pictures on their schedule. So I just want to read this, and I'll give you both copies of it. Okay. State of Maine, be it known to all that we, the members of the Senate and House of Representatives, join in recognizing Gary Lenoy of Gorham and Bev Bisbee of Saco for their innovative ideas and successful efforts in organizing a student team to assist other students with computer-related questions and technology troubleshooting. Mr. Lenoy, who supervises the use of computers in the schools located in Cape Elizabeth, initially thought of organizing a team of students to help with the daunting task of assisting the large number of students receiving laptops in the middle school. Ms. Bisbee teaches seventh grade at the Cape Elizabeth Middle School and has taken the lead in this project along with Mr. Lenoy. Known as the I-Team because of the students' use of iBooks, the team also assists Mr. Lenoy and Ms. Bisbee in trying new software for the area's schools. Thanks to the efforts of Mr. Lenoy and Ms. Bisbee, the concept of a student tech team is catching on in other parts of the state. We send our appreciation to Mr. Lenoy and Ms. Bisbee for the dedication and commitment to the youth of the state and extend our best wishes to them for the continued efforts in helping other schools throughout the state to organize their own student tech teams. And be it ordered that this official expression of sentiment be sent forthwith on behalf of the 121st legislature and the people of the state of Maine. This is signed by Beverly Daggett, the President of the Senate, Joy O'Brien, the Secretary of the Senate, Patrick Caldwell, the Speaker of the House, Millicent McFarland, the Clerk of the House, and it is introduced by myself, it is co-sponsored by Senator Lynn Bromley, Representative Larry Bliss, Representative Harold Clough, who has Barbara and Gorham, um, Representative Christopher Barstow from Gorham, Senator Carolyn Gilman from Gorham, Senator Peggy Pendleton from Scarborough and Saco District, um, Representative Christopher O'Neill from Saco, and Representative Thomas Kane from Saco. <laughs> Cape Elizabeth, that's where they live, Gorham and Saco. That's like, <laughs> it's a little convoluted. But I was just delighted to be able to introduce this and get that kind of recognition for 
really fine folks in our school system. Thank you for the opportunity to, to make a presentation tonight. Okay, thank you, Janet. And thank you, Bev and Gary, for all your hard work and dedication. We're really very lucky to have you both. Um, and now we will um, hear from Jeff first about um, Ted Jordan's proposal in our packet for a trip to Washington. For those of you who don't know, this is Ted Jordan, who's one of our social studies teachers, and he has a proposal. I think you've got a memo in, in the packet for me to Tom Fusella describing the details of the trip. But Ted is here to answer any questions that he, he can. Because of the sort of the lead time on airline reservations and because of when airlines insist that, um, that money ex get into the airline coffers in exchange for tickets, uh, there's a bit of a crunch in terms of getting this trip uh, done within the time that's right now it's scheduled for. At this point, um, everything, all the parts of the trip, all the details of it could be undone if the school board uh, decides not to approve it. Uh, but I would ask for at least your consideration of the possibility of approving it for the dates it's scheduled so that um, money can get to the airlines and the tickets can get back um, and the trip planning can go forward and get, can get definite. So that would be a request from the high school. I'm going to let Ted talk about the details of the trip and answer any questions that board members might have about it. Thank you. It's, it's good to be back again. It's good to see some of you um, for the Not first time. Not all of us. <laughs> but, <laughs> Not all for the of first us. time. <laughs> um, uh, it's been my experience. He saved himself. <laughs> It's been my experience uh, through the economics class that I've taught in the past that um, having guest speakers come in or where possible um, to take the trip to New York to meet with the specialist uh, in the stock exchange uh, proved invaluable to helping and increasing the students' understanding of how that worked. Uh, this year as the AP government teacher, I propose to you tonight to take uh, the group of the 19 advanced placement government students down to Washington, D.C., and as you can see from uh, the packet that you received to meet with a variety of people in the legislative branch, um, in the World Bank, some reporters uh, who sta are stationed in Washington, D.C., and with a little bit of luck, um, perhaps some, uh, a tour of the White House and, and maybe some people who are working in the West Wing. We're still working on that one. Um, this school and school department has sent me to a variety of places over the years for professional development. Um, my second year here, I went to the Supreme Court Summer Institute in Washington, D.C. And this past summer, I was at Cambridge uh, at Harvard to see, um, uh, for a week, to see a variety of people who were speaking on uh, the media and American democracy. And I'm going to take advantage of some of the people that I met during both of those uh, seminars and try to hook up uh, my students with those people. So I've already received um, confirmation of some of the people in the media. Um, one person works for TASS, the Russian news agency, and he was there this summer at Harvard. Another uh, reporter works for Al Jazeera, and they've agreed to meet us together Friday morning, if, pending the, the approval by the board of the trip. And um, unfortunately, the Supreme Court uh, hears oral arguments Monday through Wednesdays, and we're, uh, we'll be arriving Wednesday evening. So we may take a tour of the court, but um, I'm not sure exactly, you know, uh, who will meet or, or and what further uh, understanding the students will gain beyond that. In, in all these trips that I take, I, my intention is not to make it like a tourist trip. I'm trying to um, have the students meet with the elected officials um, and appointed officials so they can gain a greater understanding. So that's the gist of the reason for taking this trip to D.C. And uh, we would leave, as you can see from the itinerary, we would attend school all day Wednesday and then the chaperones, which would be myself and my wife Susan, social studies teacher Gretchen McNulty and her husband Kevin, along with some parent volunteers, will drive the students down to Manchester, where we'll catch a flight. We'll fly to BWI, that's the airport just south of Baltimore, uh, take a shuttle service from there to our hotel, 
we'll be there Wednesday night and we'll begin the actual um, meetings with the representatives and senators and such Thursday morning, all day Thursday, Friday. Saturday, federal offices are closed, so at that point we thought we would see some of the um, memorials on the mall. Um, I've made reservations to see the Holocaust Museum, which is free so long as you make the reservations, and we may take a tour um, of either the Pentagon or the Spy Museum that's in Washington, um, and fly back early Sunday morning. Should be back in Cape Elizabeth by 1, so they can be fully rested and recuperated from Monday morning school. So that's the plan. And I take any questions that you have about the trip. Has our school done this trip before? Um, to Washington, not in the seven years that I've been there. We've taken several trips to New York City in the past with the economics class to meet with uh, some stockbrokers. And where possible, we've had guest speakers come in. As you heard uh, from some of the students earlier, we've had Angus King in this week, and we'll have Governor Valdacci in on Thursday. Um, and there's advantages, certainly, to bringing the, the people here, but um, I'm hoping that with one fell swoop, we can see the people in their natural settings down there, uh, the two senators and the congressman, and, of course, the other people that I mentioned earlier. Ted, is this one class of AP government? It is. How many classes do we have? We only have one section of AP oh, government. Okay. AP government is the only government class that's taught that's a year long, and that was really how I made my determination uh, on who to take. These guys have been working very hard and learning all the aspects of the government that we've studied so far. Mm -hmm. um, there have been other groups that have approached me and asked if they could go along as well, but with the four chaperones that I have and the 19 students, I think it'll be just right. Do you have a hotel yet, Ted? We do, and it's, it's being held for us pending approval, and so I'll, I'll let them know if, if, if it is proved that uh, we'll be coming. It's, uh, it's, it's across the street, I'm blanking on the name, but it's across the street from the State Department and the World Bank. It's seven blocks from the White House. Um, the price is very reasonable, um, and it's in you know, the downtown area, so there was some cheaper over in Crystal City and Rosalind, but um, I didn't want to deal with the commuter traffic on the subway, so I th thought we could, we could walk to most of the places we're going. And quite frankly, um, the way I've set this up, I'd like it to be intense in the morning, but I don't, you know, you, if, for you folks who've taken vacations, um, if you go to museums or hear speakers all day, you glaze over about one o'clock, so we're going to try to mix it up and have some of the intense stuff, and I'm trying to urge the people that we're meeting with to make it um, question and answer. Uh, so that there's some interaction. <coughs> Otherwise, I think it will be a, a little bit too much for the students to spend as much time as they will be with all these people. The memo we have indicates that the total cost is $500 a student. Have you encountered any student who's incapable or, or challenged by paying that kind of cost? Uh, I've talked with several of them individually just to make sure that that was not the case and so, so far every one of the 19 in the class have expressed the ability to pay. Okay. okay. Are there other questions for Ted? Um, just so the school board is cleared, normally we like to have your proposal one month before we give the approval to take the trip um, and that there will not be time for that. So what Ted is requesting is approval tonight from the board. So I, I'm not certain how the board feels about that, um, whether we, everybody is agreeable to give him the okay to take this trip. I mean, there certainly is enough detail in um, front of us about the trip itself. Kevin? Ted is an experienced teacher and he's experienced with these field trips. He does this on a regular basis. Um, I think his field trips always tie directly into the curriculum. They're not pleasure trips. And therefore, in this case, I would move that we waive our normal requirement for a second hearing on this and approve uh, the field trip tonight, understanding that we are approving the time off from the school and the, the board has no financial responsibility or other responsibility for um, this trip. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there a second? A second. Okay, Kathy. Um, are there any comments or any further questions for Ted before we take a vote? 
No, but I, I think it sounds like a great opportunity for the kids, and I appreciate you putting the time and effort into it to organize it. Thanks. Glad to do it. I, I do have a list of questions, if anyone's interested, that might be submitted to Republican members. <laughs> <laughs> and aside from that, I hope you'll take the opportunity to visit the wall. We will. We will. Thanks. Okay. So all of those in favor of um, allowing Ted to take this trip to Washington, D.C., um, and as per um, the packet here and all of the dates and the information included? 7-0. Thank, Thank you, Ted. Thank you. I'm glad to see all of you tonight. Okay. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, now we will hear um, our annual technology uh, report from Gary Lenoy. Are you going to show up here? <laughs> it's my girl. I'm just going to stay put. No, I just, I have eaten. I'll just breathe on you. Are you staying there or are you moving to the middle? I'm going to stay next to the microphone. Oh, okay. <laughs> As usual, as, as the title says, uh, this is the annual technology report um, to the school board. Kind of an overview of the activities that the technology department's been involved in through the year and the school department. And uh, this is also a little bit of informational to show you some of the things that we've been doing and what what's, uh, we're all about. I know we have some new board members, and maybe some people out there in the community that, that don't know some of the things that we do. So. Uh, some of these first few slides will we'll deal with some of that. I want to talk about the, the department and the, the tech plan that we have, state programs that, that we're involved with, um, the laptop program, and where we want to go in the future. This is not my budget presentation. That's to come in the future. But this is just kind of an overview of where we are and, and things to, to consider as far as the budget goes. Um, the technology department is a town school department. We uh, been involved with the one town concept for um, a long time since I've been on board and we deal with town computers as well as school computers. We have three full-time staff, myself, the tech coordinator and two technicians. There are other people that help us in buildings but basically the three staff that, that work here from out of this building. And we do pretty much everything that has to do with technology. We order, install and maintain and troubleshoot and uh, dealing with the networks, the computers, the printers, everything in the town and in school. Um, some higher level things we do contract out, but most of the day-to-day the -day stuff, we're the ones that deal with that. We also deal with the with training, and that's, that's the big part of our job, or a big part that we need to focus on on our job as we move into the future. We have a technology plan that had, we've had for, hmm, Quite a few years now. I can't remember. I think maybe back in see, seven, eight, nine years ago was the first time back when I was a classroom teacher that I presented one of these, this the report and the plan. And it's a revolving plan. It's approved by the state. In fact, ours expires this June, and we need to update it. And what we have done, and what has worked for us, is we've um, upgraded computers in one school per year. And we don't throw away all those computers. We take the ones that we're updating and, and recycling and use them in classrooms and other places. Um, this year was the high school's turn. We replaced the high school labs, the, the Windows lab and the Mac lab, upgraded the classrooms with what was in there. We discovered the, uh, the laptop program at the middle school. 
came with the laptops, but there were a lot of missing pieces that the state didn't fund. We found that we didn't have enough printers, we didn't have enough projectors like this for the staff once they started using technology and once technology got prevalent throughout the building. So we added some additional resources for the multi laptop program. And just so that you know, we generally have a, about a six year life cycle for our computers. So we get our money's worth out of them. There's many state initiatives that are happening and they are involving technology. Our, our staff used to fill out these pink informational forms that went to the State Department at the beginning of every school year. We didn't do that this year because they were, they were developing this, this METAMS project, the Main Educational Data Management System. And this is going to hold all that information. Um, it's also going to be used for us to meet No Child Left Behind and main learning results. In other words, our data will come from our district into this system and eventually it may be easier to fill out some of these federal and state forms because it'll all be through one, one big database. We've started doing that. I've been to a, a couple of schools. This, this program was supposed to start early in the fall and because of glitches with the software vendor and things like that, they're really just starting to roll it out now. I've been to the middle school and the elementary school and we've done some training and staff have actually logged into the computer. It's a web interface, they go online and they fill out and update their data. We're going to be doing that with the high school after vacation. Uh, but it will all be, be computerized. And because it involves computers, it's, um, it's our department is involved, setting it up and uh, training the staff to use it. Another piece, and you heard one of our middle school students talk about this, the MEA online. Uh, eighth graders will be completing a portion of their MEA testing with their laptops this year. That's if everything goes goes well with the testing. We've done one test session. We had pretty good success. We didn't get everyone connected. We're actually doing another one tomorrow to see if we can get everyone on at the same time connected to our server. Um, this has been also a piece of work that we've been involved with. There's a couple of day training session. We set up a server on site. There's all kinds of redundancy. We don't want kids to lose what they're doing when they're taking the test. And that's all built into the system. And if everything goes well and we pass our certification testing, our eighth graders will be taking one portion of the, the MEA online this year. And in future years, the plan is that it will all be online. That's, that's the plan. So that's another piece of work that we've been involved with. Uh, a third piece that's, that's a big thing this year, we decided to move to a, a different student information system. Uh, PowerSchool is, is the system that we've selected. We, that decision was made late in the last year in December, and we're starting to implement that now. The software, the, the hardware on site, we're starting to get our school data in. This is also going to be a big project. One of the things that we wanted to do with the new system is get us all on the same one. Right now we have three different, three different systems and three different schools, and they didn't talk to one another very well. Now we'll all be on one. We also wanted a system that not only would do our normal stuff, our grades, our attendance, our scheduling, and progress reports, we also wanted to keep track of the learning results in there. And this system will do that. The system will also export the data out into that state system metas. So this is another piece of work that, that will take a lot of time this, this fall. And we'll, we should be up and running in full implementation in the fall of 2004 with all three schools. Every year we run a, a staff development week during the summer. Um, used to be called the Tech Academy. We now call it the Cape Academy because we're including some professional development offerings that Sarah Simmons is doing for learning, learning results and uh, local assessments and those kinds of things. Here's our figures from last August. We have 45 total participants. These are staff, although there was one of those was a staff from another district. But 44 were staff from our district. And the way that we do the training, it's a five-day thing, and different things happen each day. So you can take one day, two days. You can take multiple days, but Monday does. You don't have to take Monday to take Tuesdays. It's, they're all independent workshops. Um, so we had many staff attend multiple days. Some, some, a few, two or three, attended all week long. We sent seven staff members to MAC Leadership, which is they do their training a little bit different in Yarmouth. They run a week-long session. So you, don't, you can't take just one day or two day, you have to take the whole week-long session. Um, 
most of those members were some of our eighth grade faculty that were you know, coming, just coming on board with the, with the laptops and wanted to get some additional training. So we've had quite a bit of staff development over the summer. We've put together dates for this coming summer, and that's as far as we are right now. But it seems to be a, a popular thing, and actually attendance seems to be growing every year. Um, continuing issues for the technology department and maintaining and upgrading technology, providing adequate support. We've got increased demands. One of my colleagues from another school district calls the, uh, these, these state things the three M's, Milty, Metams, and MEA Online. So all of the things, the initiatives coming down from the, the state that we've had to deal with because they have a technology component has added to, to some of the workload. One of the issues that we did a piece of work with this year was disposing some of the old technology. Uh, computers now are considered hazardous waste. You can't just throw them in landfills. They have to be disposed of properly. And it costs money to do that. We've done some of that in a couple of the schools, um, but we still need to do more of that. And some of this will be reflected in what you see in the budget presentations. And of course, work on the student information system. I like the, that kind of sums some of the stuff that we've been involved with. Now I want to spend some time on um, the Milty project, the laptop project, because that's a big chunk of our work, and it's got some implications for the future. We're in the second year of this four-year program, and what it means to Cape Elizabeth is 320 student iBooks and 30 staff iBooks. So we've got 350 pieces of technology that we, we wouldn't have had if it wasn't for this program. The program is really geared for the middle school and they will stay at the middle school, those iBooks. The eighth graders will give up their iBooks at the end of this year and they will get recycled back to next year's seventh graders and will stay in the middle school for two more years. Really, nobody knows what's going to happen at the end of the four-year cycle because the state, I'm not sure that even the state knows. The original intent of the program was to continue into high school. Um, that, we're not sure. And you can read as what you read in the papers with budgets as, as tight as they are, even the, the, the governor would like to continue it, the commissioner would like to con continue it, but uh, funding is real tight, so that's, that's a big question mark right now. We did form a local laptop committee to kind of take a look at things and explore all possibilities. Uh, talking about Milty, what I try to do is, is try to document some of the, the work that we do as a department and these, there's these things called trouble calls, issues. When I have to deal with an issue with a laptop, the, uh, anything from it has to be sent in for repair to maybe it needs a new battery, those are trouble calls. In the first year, when we had just our seventh grade with laptops, that was the first year we had 160 laptops in the district, so half of what we've got now, there were a total of 176 trouble calls the first year. If you, I'm going to use my little that we got for, for present here. This year, right in there, this year I'm keeping track of my trouble calls in a database, and we've had 343 trouble calls already as to this point in this year. Of course, we do have double the number of laptops. Um, and as you can see, 27 are outstanding right now. Those are open calls, things that we're dealing with. So the workload has increased, and that 343 is, is since the 1st of August. That's when we started keeping. Uh, I can say that I need some extra help, but unless I can really show you some numbers, you, you know, I'm not saying that you don't believe me, but I just wanted to kind of document some of that stuff. Now that's just the milky stuff. We, we also keep a log of our general stuff. One of the creative things that, that was what the uh, kind of the, the legislative sentiment was all about, was we did put together a, a student team, a student tech team that we called the I-team. It's, it actually has benefited us. I think it's also benefited the students. The students really enjoyed what they're doing. They like the technology and they like helping people. Um, these aren't the computer geeks of the school. They're just kids, regular kids that would like to help. We have approximately 50 members. Um, one of the things that was real exciting is this is caught on around the state. I think we were the first to start it, but it's caught on all around the state. We attended a, a conference in Gorham Middle School in January of 2004 and there were three to four hundred students and teachers there, I-teams from all over the state. Um, so this has really caught on 
and it's uh, it's a way to help support. It's not you can't just use IT students. There, I mean, there has to be some paid staff to work with it, but there's a lot more of them in all of the classrooms to deal with the day-to-day -day issues. Gary, are the 50 um, students split just about uh, equally? Yeah, I'm, I'm, and I'm approximating a roughly 25 in each grade level. And we have kind of a revolving door. We have kids come and go, depending on whether they're involved in activities and things like that. We don't really turn anybody away. We haven't. So we have an open door policy. Uh, what does the future hold? Middle school students have had the opportunity to be part of this laptop program, the, this experiment, along with the rest of the state. Current eighth graders have had these laptops for a couple of years now. Laptop committee was put together to kind of explore our options and see, you know, what's the best thing to do for Cape Elizabeth. And to take a sidestep, there is one high school in the state of Maine that has had laptops for a while. And this, this report was just released in January 2004. Uh, this is the Guilford area, Scatacris Community High School. They were actually ones that started laptops before the whole state program. They were a paper company that ended up getting some funding along with the school district, and they, they bought laptops before this whole 7th and 8th grade building program started. So they've had laptops longer, and they also now have furnished laptops for their whole high school. And this report deals with this high school and the findings from the first two years of a one-to-one -one laptop program at a high school level. We know what it's like at a middle school level. We can experience that. We, we're not sure about the high school yet. And this documents some of that. Some of the stuff that they, they found, and I'll give you a, the executive summary of this when, when you get my budget stuff. We'll see some more details about this. But here's some general findings, and I just picked out some things. Laptops make school work more interesting. Students are more motivated. Strong majority of teachers report laptops that improve students' engagement and interest level. We've heard that over and over again from this study and from other studies. Quality of work has improved. Student achievement in their classes has improved since the laptops. Uh, how have laptops affected kind of three groups of students, traditional type students that we have, traditional at risk or low achieving and high achieving. Um, from this report at this school, teachers are indicating that laptops have resulted in the greatest improvement for at risk or low achieving students. Um, least likely to show improvements with their high achieving students, maybe because there's not, you know, there's, there's, there's not much for them to have to grow. And then uh, laptops have leveled the playing field, so these lower achieving students can with the regular students. So those are some good findings. We, as a laptop committee, decided to put together a survey and survey our students and our teachers. Actually, we've already stu surveyed students, we've uh, surveyed our teachers, seventh and eighth grade teachers, and we currently are doing a survey for parents to find out the parents' attitudes about some of these things. Parents' survey just went out, we don't have details on that yet. but. Here are some things that I just picked out. There's probably um, 15 or so questions on the survey. But here are some things. And the survey that we gave, I gave to a colleague of mine in another local district. Asked not to put his name up there or what the district was, but just so that we can kind of compare ourselves to where we are with other districts. And it's not that you know we're better than them, them or they're better than us, but we're still seeing some very positive agreements on this. Even the, even the lowest number up there, 66%. I use my laptops regularly in most of my classes. Well, that's still two thirds of our students. So these are some results that we found from the student survey. And there's a whole, there's uh, several other questions. The use of laptops has a positive effect on the grades. Instant access to information is important. They've helped me learn more or learn better and have improved my motivation to learn. So those are things that we saw also in that, that great schools project from Guilford. Here's what the teachers were saying. There's a bunch of management stuff that's involved with the laptops. We were curious as to whether that was worth the effort, and according to our staff, it was. So it's enhanced their teaching, they improved my students' motivation to learn, and it helped my students learn more, learn better in class. So these were some of the things that we're seeing, and these are some of the things we're hearing from our 
students and staff. There was the middle school students talked about our debate. There was a debate recently in Freeport Middle School and Cape, and uh, they were debating the actually the laptop program should it continue. And a couple of our students sent me some of their quotes, um, debating for the positive side of Morgan Alden. These are the resources that are on there. All of these programs, World Wide Web, iPhoto, iMovie, Scientific Calculator, all of these other kinds of things. Um, supply us with the resources to create any type of project or assignment. And then something about the cost, concerning the cost. Um, there is a the World Book Encyclopedia in each one of these articles. And a paper copy of the World Book Encyclopedia costs uh, more than an iPhone. So good, good debate point there. And um, Milty has resulted in better student performance, a wonderful resource for schools, unrivaled learning opportunity for many useful life skills. It's helping me in education to improve phenomenally and simply cannot be taken away after four years. These are our, our eight graders saying these kinds of things. This is our vision from our future direction plan. Cape Elizabeth will be one of the top public school systems in the state. In the U.S., having created, well, you can read that. In conclusion, former Governor King, I, I've seen this, this tape several, several times. When the governor, when the, when the state had the surplus, what the what the governor wanted to do was to find some way to use this money to make a, a, a big impact, and he wanted to impact education and he wanted to impact it in a big way, not just uh, you know, fixing a few roofs in schools or doing some things like that. He really wanted to, to make you know, a transformational impact in education, not just, not just at the margins. And talking to big thinkers, Governor King discovered, or former Governor King discovered that the difference happens when it's one to one, and that's where this program all started. One of the nice things about Milton is it's, and one of the things they've said right from day one is it's not about the technology, it's not about the laptops, it's really about teaching and learning and the improvements that, are, that it's doing in teaching and learning. What we've discovered, our students are, and I'll, I stole this term from um, Betty Manchester, students are called digital natives. I mean, they've grown up with this stuff. They know this stuff back, back and forth, left and right. Um, my age people, we're the, and the teachers, we're the immigrants. We're new to this stuff. We didn't grow up with these tools. I'm a little bit more involved because that's, that's my business. But the average person or teacher may, may be new to this stuff. And we need to bring them along. We didn't notice in our teacher survey that there was a big difference between teachers that had used the laptops for two years versus teachers that had used them for one year. So with more training, with more support, um, there's, there's growth there. What are other districts doing? There are some districts that are, want to go ahead with this, whether, whether the state does something or not. And I can name a few schools. There's one school um, down south, uh, southern part of us, and I'm not sure if it's final yet. Thornton Academy wants to put laptops in the hands of, of all of the, the high school students. But that's a, you know, a private institution, and they've got some private funds uh, to go along with that. What are we going to do? What we want to do is we want to bring, include this technology in the high school. We want to move our students forward. They've had, our students have had a wonderful experience, so we're going to try to find ways that, that we can do that. And that's, that's where we are right now. Questions? Gary, I was wondering if you find that the seventh grade students this year have increased usage and are the teachers using it more compared to the seventh grade last year just because of comfort level in the school and with the staff and all that? Do you find that? So once you see the survey results, because we broke them down from seventh and eighth grades, there is a difference <coughs> between what the seventh grade students say and what the seventh grade staff say. And I think that year of experience behind their belt has brought about all kinds of resources and uses for those. So I think you're seeing more of the use in the seventh grade mm -hmm. than in the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. Other people can other questions? Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, Gary. And now we'll move on to the principal's re reports, and we'll start with Nancy at the middle school. Good evening. Well, first, I'd just like to add my congratulations. How about this? <laughs> on career day, I learned how to put a microphone together. Now, um, I would like to add my congratulations to Beverly and to Gary for their recognition by the legislature. Uh, we certainly are very blessed to have them be part of our team at the middle school, and they have been a major reason why our program is a success. So um, our congratulations to them on behalf of the entire middle school. Then I'd, I'd like to tell you a couple of stories. They'll be short. <clears throat> but uh, what is in response to Kevin's sharing with you that career day went pretty well, and those people who didn't get their first choices just learned how to deal with it. One of the people who helps him with that, dealing with it, is Rick Madden, our guidance counselor, who has a lot to do with career day. And one of the things he does when they say, I didn't get any of my choices, he brings them down and he said, would this be your handwriting? Oh, Mr. Madden, that is my handwriting. Well, when I read that, doesn't it say choice one, choice two, choice three? Oh, Mr. Madden, you're right. And you know, that's exactly what I got. It's amazing. So that's one of the things that helps our middle school students sometimes deal with career day. We were able this year to get all of our seventh, grade, seventh and eighth graders into their first and second choices. So we felt um, very pleased with that. And it's wonderful to have members of the community come and share their excitement for what they do. It's not only the variety of the things they do, but also it's the excitement that they bring to their job and that they share with us. So we're very pleased with that. Um, the other. Um, short story is a story about myself. Last Monday, a few students, being middle school students, were really excited because they thought I'd had a stroke of brilliance. I had arranged a late start day following the Super Bowl. They were very sure I had played a, an integral role in this, and I, I didn't go into the laboring point of how the calendar was set last year, well before we didn't know what the paper but I season would be like. Calendar committee for yeah. that. Yeah. Well, no, it, what, Jennifer, you can, you I was going to say that if you didn't, because I heard you take. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry, ladies. You weren't out there, and I took all the credit because. <laughs> but it was very short lived because by Friday afternoon, when I had to cancel the dance, that moment of popularity was long gone. So um, it was a nice visit there for a few days, but it's over. Uh, we are in the process of trying to reschedule that dance, but we've run into a few glitches, so we're working it out as best we can. And if we're not successful, we'll just move forward with our April dance. And I'm pretty sure life will go on, although we will be disappointed. They'll just have to learn to live with it. <laughs> you know, to deal with it. And this time, I don't know if Mr. Madden can help me out or not. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what he's doing. Uh, Gary mentioned the online testing, as did Kevin. And we are trying our second round of that. We actually felt we had a pretty good result with that, just a couple of glitches that we thought would come up as well. However, just to bring you up to date, we did our testing last Wednesday at from 9.30 to 10.30. By 12.30, we received an alert bulletin from MEA, do not try to test or take the practice test. The system is down. We'll let you know when it gets back on as soon as possible. Well. We didn't hear, we didn't hear. We made some phone calls. They were unable to return those calls. Finally today, we did get through late in the afternoon, and yes, the system is back up and running, and we are going to try it again tomorrow. We are excited about this. Taking the MEAs online really is exciting. Um, as the teachers got into the training for that, as they went through the practice test, I think they felt much more at ease with it. The students really, some of them, they were doing, we were doing the writing prompt because that's the test we're actually gonna take. They really liked working on this. Oh, look, it's right here. And the other amazing thing, when you proctor from a laptop, when time is up, the test stops. And the proctor stops the test for everyone at the same time. And 
um, they were kind of discouraged that our time was up. They knew it was a practice, but they were really getting in to what they were doing. So if we can make it work, I think it will be exciting. I would offer just the one caution. I think this is a great idea that may be just a little bit ahead of our capacity as a state to deliver it, but I hope that I'm proven wrong and that is not correct, but I think we're, it's not far down the road. If we don't make it this year, we certainly will next year. And I, Jennifer. I don't know if you can answer this or if Gary can, but if they're taking something online, is there the chance that they can lose it all? Uh, they save it automatically every 12 seconds. So the most, if you had a power failure or a surge or some type of technical failure, the most amount of work you would lose is 12 seconds worth of work. So the computer itself saves it every they, The system that it goes to unmeasured progress automatically saves it every 12 seconds. I believe that's what they told us. Um, kind of thing. The one thing we're not exactly sure of is if it goes out and I've saved it, where is it so I can continue it? Mm -hmm kind of an interesting question, which they haven't had an answer for yet. But in theory, I think they have a lot of the big picture theories worked out. Yeah. I think the little small details of some of the things are, are what is slowing down the process. Um, but I'm pretty sure if we don't make it this year, we will be online for next year. And it's actually very exciting to do it that way. So good thing to do that. You know, when I get up here, I always like to invite you, if you get a few moments and you're wondering, what could I do today? Thursday morning. You're out there, it's a nice day, it's 8 o'clock. What could I do for fun? Well, you could come to the Cape Elizabeth Middle School to our spelling bee that's going to be in the uh, cafetorium. It will be standing room only because it's for grades 6, 7, and 8, and we barely fit in there, but um, certainly welcome to come and attend if you would like. I will tell you, last year, many of the words were frequently used words, and Everyone knew those. Some of them were the frequently heard words, but not often used, but they were intriguing. And some of them were words that haven't been well used in the English language or used a great deal. I'm sure they've been correctly used, but not used a great deal in the English language of yet. So it was a challenging spelling bee. And our students, uh, our student audience is very attentive to this. They really do admire the kids who can get up there and spell words. And that's not a talent that everyone has. So um, it's a nice time to do that. And I think that might be it for this evening. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Nancy. Any comments or questions for Nancy? No. Okay. Um, Pine Cove, Tom. Good evening, everybody. Um, you probably have figured out that we reached the midpoint of the school year a couple of weeks ago. I just wanted to bring you up to date on the events and activities that relate to the midpoint. With the invaluable assist assistance of the tech team that you heard about tonight and the um, unwavering patience of the secretary, we managed to defeat the printer gremlins for a little while and get the, print, the report cards printed at home last Friday. These reports, as you may know from getting them, um, are a combination of both our continuum of long-term goals in language arts, reading and writing, and very specific things in math. So it's both long-term and then checking standards on the way. Um, it's also helped us by having this report card form in front of us to keep our instructional calendar on uh, a little more in task than we used to. We've had, for example, a kind of a loose agreement at each grade level about the sequence and the calendar for teaching everyday math. But I think in the combination of getting prepared for this report card for the past few years and a willingness to do things more as a team, the teaching teams got together this summer and created a kind of detailed calendar about which units to cover in everyday math in each grade level. And it's, it's been, I've gotten very positive feedback from teachers and I assume from parents. And we will uh, try to spread that concept to uh, other areas since it's worked so well. Um, Attached as we are to this current system, we understand that uh, with the LAS, the learning uh, local assessment system attached to learning results, and the student information system that Gary referred to tonight, we will likely change it next year to, to meld those two. Um, another thing that we've discovered with, uh, it's not web-based yet, with this reporting system that the teachers, although they're networked, have to come to school to enter their data and just some uh, personal feedback about that. The maintenance department turned the heat on higher two weekends in a row so that the staff could come in and do that. That's the kind of effort the teachers put into it. 
Uh, Nancy referred to the late start day, you know, besides celebrating the Patriots' victory. Little kids weren't quite into that, but they, they understood. We used that day in combination of other days during the year with the flex time and the regularly scheduled uh, K-12 through days. We followed up on the spelling investigation that we started last summer. It gave us a chance to check up on the pilot project we're doing in phonics with our willingness to use more research to, with our spelling instruction to get things done September, October, November, December, and then report back with Kelly, teacher leader Kelly Hassan's guidance to see how things were going. It also, from my point of view, gave the staff uh, just a time to get together and see how much common language we have with that thread of the curriculum. So it was a very valuable time for us. Tomorrow for the calendar is Know Yourself, Be Yourself Day. That's a program we had last year. It comes from the Hyde School. It involves all the third grade parents and kids. And we do that in association, not just with the Hyde, Hyde School students, but the Cape Elizabeth High School students. So um, it's a good program in and, in and of itself. I think we had 100% attendance from the parents last year. But it's one more opportunity to connect the high school with, with Pond Cove. Whenever we do it, it's very successful. And it reminds me that we should do that again. It's also at the elementary level, it's 100th day tomorrow, and I think the calendar committee can take credit for that too. It's become something of a, of a tradition in elementary schools around the country to celebrate 100th day in kindergarten, first and second. Nancy mentioned that the MEA begins in uh, early March, and just to give you one more warning about it, this year it's scaled down both in time and in content. We're doing it um, only in reading, writing, math, and science and technology, so we're not doing um, visual and performing arts or health. We've also cut down the window. The idea is, again, well-intentioned. Don't take out of instructional time and get the uh, results back more quickly. And again, just to give you a little warning, next year we'll be doing mini MEAs in reading and math in grades three, five, six, and seven. So uh, we'll see how that all works out. And finally, just a traffic report. The, um, the subject has come up here and at the building committee. Parent Dorothy, Stock, uh, Dorothy Stack wrote a great letter of urging parents to exercise more caution, more concern for safety, and more patience at pickup time and drop-off time at Pond Cove. And as a result of that letter going out in the weekly notices from Pond Cove and in the Courier, I've noticed a noticeable increase in parental cooperation at, at particularly a pickup time. I appreciate it, and I think that's the way to go. So thank you, Dorothy, and thank you for parents for getting the message. Okay. Questions? Thank you, Tom. Comments or questions for Tom? No? Okay, okay. thank you. Um, Jeff, the high school. I have two things to give to each of you first. I'm going to be quick, uh, I think. <laughs> the, the, the green sheet on top is a sheet which informs board members about a survey uh, that we're asking all of you to complete, if you would, before the end of this month, sometime at your convenience. I'm told the, the survey takes about 15 minutes. It's in connection with the school's self-study uh, as part of its reaccreditation process. Uh, as one of the students noted, I can't remember who it was, Michael or Rebecca, uh, attached the report cards that went out uh, this second quarter were comparable sheets informing all the students that they're being asked to participate in the surveys. And the library has, next to its computers, reminders to the students about how to do that, how to go in and take it. And we hope they will do that. And going home shortly in a letter to parents, to all parents, will be a similar notice about a parent survey, all in connection with the school self-study. Uh, I think the green sheet is fairly self-explanatory. It's being done through, and the results are compiled by Endicott College under contract with the New England Association of Schools and Colleges. Uh, if you could take a few minutes sometime between now and the end of the month, it would be greatly appreciated and help to inform our self-study process. 
The second document that I've given to you um, is, is for your interest. Uh, if, if you have the interest to look through, as I mentioned a month or two ago, the State Department of Education nominated Cape Elizabeth High School uh, as the main, as the, the sole nominee at the high school level uh, to be considered for a National Blue Ribbon Schools Recognition Program Award. And it's been a considerable amount of work to put that together. There's some interesting, I hope, data in there that was interesting to me to look at it and think about it. Um, and in talking with Tom and with Marie, it sounded like something that board members might um, have an interest in looking through. So that is out, that is in. Uh, I'm not sure, can't remember exactly when we hear, but I'm sure it's sometime before the end of the school year. Regardless of whether our, the application is ultimately accepted or not, it certainly was a, an honor uh, to be nominated by the state um, based on our students' academic performance over the past several years for consideration for that award. There are meetings with the architect uh, that are beginning to happen. Uh, there's been a couple meetings recently with a group of teachers and coaches uh, looking at the renovation of the locker rooms, um, and that's a real challenge. Um, to try to find the right balance between the desire to expand storage space, but to keep the locker rooms, uh, to have adequate locker rooms, uh, but still to be able to have a more efficient organization of that space. And I think we're heading in the right direction. Um, it's a, it is interesting because they're learning about um, uh, the support walls and things like that. There are certain constraints that we have to operate around in terms of what the architect can do. But I expect that there will be a third meeting uh, shortly after the break. And in connection with Winterfest activities, I only wanted to drop one name uh, for the board. Um, on Wednesday night of last week, I think it was, uh, we had, as, as Michael mentioned, a second um, no stakes, no money involved poker contest. There were 84 students who participated, which was up from 60 uh, in the fall when we did that the first time. It was an overwhelming response. Mr. Tinkham, who was supervising it for the faculty, was um, a little bit dismayed that it went until 11.15 before the champion was finally identified, particularly since he got knocked out fairly early in the competition, earlier than he expected. Uh, but it was great fun, uh, and one of the fun things about it was that a ninth grader, Tucker Emerson, um, took away the championship for the freshman class. So it was a good accomplishment for Tucker. And that is all. I have it you have any questions? I'd be yeah. happy to answer. Jeff, if you're um, both on the board and a parent, do you want us to take this twice? Do we take it? I think so. Different. Okay. I think so because I believe it's a different, different. set of questions. Okay. So yes. Okay. Any other questions or comments for Jeff? And I would encourage everyone to go through and read this um, Blue Ribbon Schools program because there really is very interesting information about the high school. Okay. <clears throat> now we can move on to the committee reports. Um, the finance subcommittee, Elaine? Uh, yes, the finance committee uh, met uh, prior to this evening's regular board meeting. Um, there was um, a request from Gary Lenoy uh, regarding technology and the use of funds from his professional services fund to uh, hire a part-time assistant to help with uh, the basic laptop needs at the middle school, and uh, the board approved that. Um, Pauline reported uh, also on uh, an unemployment trust fund refund, and we also set up the uh, schedule and the members of the negotiating uh, team members for some of the contract negotiations that we'd have with the various subgroups in the school. Um, I just wanted to take a, a real quick opportunity, though, to add some other things regarding finance at this time um, for the community at large. Um, back in January, um, the town council had uh, held a goal-setting uh, workshop and invited uh, the school board to participate um, or to listen and, and provide some materials at that time. Um, we were able to uh, give a, a very preliminary budget to them that consisted of some of the fixed costs that we knew that we would be having during the upcoming um, school year. And in that, we knew that the salaries and the benefits would be representing a 4.6% increase in our total budget, that the 
project that had gone to referendum would be representing a two point five percent increase along with some very conservative estimates for utilities and supplies of an increase of around one percent we provided that information with them along with some new positions or programs that we would need to address such things as enrollment issues special ed issues the technology issues that we've seen Gary talk about and also some main state learning requirements and those new programs amounted to approximately four percent at the time the town council went around the room and they gathered up some feelings from the individual counselors as to what they saw their goals would also be on the municipal side and in the end they were able to give the school board some direction and asked us to look at a goal of about eight point one percent which on the surface is certainly more than what we've had in the past but it does just cover the fixed costs that we have it does not allow for these things that I had just addressed in the four percent regarding enrollment issues and technology and main state learning the school board is definitely going to need to to weigh these requests as a group and we're certainly will look for ways to prioritize with the existing programs I think that we'll be exploring some revenue potential and we'll probably spend the next several months really working together with the administrators um, so that we can really best meet the needs of the students um, and then I just wanted to also share that we will be meeting on in uh, uh, on February 24th will be a uh, workshop we'll be discussing budget uh, followed by an all day or all morning and most of the afternoon workshop on February 28th which is a Saturday the public is invited to attend and um, give some feedback and this all leads to a presentation on April 14th to the town council of a final budget one other thing that I, I wanted to share with the community is that I know that there was an article in the paper that the town council had asked um, I believe it was the assessor to take a look at the effect of uh, Carol Pileski's tax initiative that was just recently approved to go before the voters today um, one of the things that came out of it was that based on the formula that would be used to create funds for our community that we would lose um, nine million dollars to the town of Cape Elizabeth through the loss of property taxes um, of that nine million dollars based on the way the budget breaks out that would represent six million dollars to our school uh, to all of our schools in Cape Elizabeth and when you add that to uh, combine that with the fact that our budget is only 15 million dollars you could literally take a look at it and say that's the equivalent of 120 teachers from our school system now the state has made the assumption or perhaps Carol Pulaski's group has made an assumption that the state would step up to bat on this but I think that you still need to take into account that we have not always been treated uh, with the current school funding formula in a great and in, in a generous way so that um, the 120 is just a guideline it's just kind of food for thought so thank you 120 teachers out of how many there are only 150 I think or 50 160 okay yeah okay. it would represent rather large classes <laughs> okay. Um, okay thank you Elaine um, the policy subcommittee and uh, our policy committee met on February 3rd and there are a number of different um, things that we discussed the first of which is the conflict of interest and nepotism policies which at this point are actually two separate policies one of the things our committee has discussed is um, combining them into one um, so but we have decided to probably make those separate first actually I should back up for a minute and just say that I know that we've mentioned this before in this policy committee report um, 
but it's a pretty broad policy, both of them, and it requires a lot of consideration. There are a number of different issues that really have to be looked at closely. So our committee is continuing to work on it, which is why I'm talking about it again. Um, one of the key issues that our committee discussed in detail is the issue of um, whether or not to restrict administrators from hiring relatives um, or to allow such uh, such hiring practice with prior school board notification. Um, there was a lot of discussion concerning this, and at this point there is no consensus on our committee um, as to that, so that's something that we're going to be talking about in more detail. Um, just a couple of other small issues was whether to um, expand the term immediate family to encompass extended family in, um, throughout the documents. And then another issue um, is whether or not to include community services from this policy. The outcome of, of the whole discussion is that um, Jen, Jennifer um, and Jeff are going to be drafting two separate, uh, two different policies for both the conflict of interest and nepotism. And those will both be reviewed at our next committee meeting. And um, the committee will review those. And hopefully at our next school board meeting, we'll have a policy to bring forward to you. Um, in addition to that, we talked about the um, other four policies that we have on our plate to look at and to consider uh, in the remainder of the school year. The first of which is the co-curricular policy. That will be. Um, we'll be using the athletic policy as sort of a guidepost to developing a new uh, co-curricular policy. And Jen has offered to do a first draft of that policy, and she'll bring that to the committee um, in the next month or two. Uh, the diversity policy, which we do currently have, is currently primarily a religious holiday policy. One of the things we briefly discussed was um, kind of broadening that and addressing it um, a number of different issues. We really want to talk about what we want to include in that, what concepts we want to, we want to include, um, and then have some specific uh, issues that will follow from our overall considerations and what we really want to cover in that policy. We're not really sure when, will that, when we'll be bringing that to the full board. The third is the high school diplomacy policy. Um, Jeff has been working on a draft for that and um, hopefully we'll get to that in the next couple of months. And finally is the textbook curriculum policy. Um, and Tom will be gathering some sample policies for us to look at at our next meeting. Uh, that's it. Any questions? Thanks. Okay, thank you, Ann. Um, the building committee, Elaine. Um, I'd just like to start off and um, welcome Kathy Ray to the Building Committee. Um, thank you for stepping up and um, offering. Um, and then I wanted to thank Ann Belden for her service on the Building Committee. Um, I appreciated uh, the input that you were able to give and the Town Council for uh, allowing us to, to make this uh, change due to um, new positions within the school board. Um, I like to just uh, give a little recap regarding the work of the building committee. Uh, we met on Wednesday, February 4th. Um, at that time, the building committee uh, looked at uh, site plans for the high school that included both grade and structural changes to the front entrance. They also looked at renderings of the cafeteria addition that expanded uh, space, and they took upon our suggestions of increasing some light. Uh, it blends well with the pool, I believe, and it really does utilize that outside area as a gathering space. Um, so we took a look at those. Um, the Pond Cove design work continues uh, by HKTA, and they also received some feedback from the Pond Cove staff. We anticipate it will go out for a bid period still in March or April, uh, with construction starting sometime in the early spring, May, around there. Um, both of these projects will be going before the planning board on Monday, February 23rd. Um, to date, this process seems to be proceeding smoothly. Um, we anticipate at that time some feedback uh, regarding the town traffic study 
and the approval process for the high school and any input for the traffic light um when wednesday's meeting we also invited representatives um of a citizen group uh who are looking into the possibility of upgrading the already approved lower field uh, at the high school um there were three representatives and i think there was very good dialogue about what the building committee would need to know uh, what the group would need to understand up front as to the conditions uh, for uh, them to proceed with this um, we talked about um, the fact that the building co committee felt strongly that we would need to know all the costs associated costs of, of, of upgrading this field to um, artificial turf um, they would need to know the statistics they also felt very firmly that this project would need to be 100 percent funded by uh, a fundraising campaign that uh, this was something that also needed to be in hand before they could start um, that we would provide them with a timeline that will allow them to do the fundraising but will also allow us time to have any planning board alterations um, and that we could still proceed um, hopefully by next spring on that particular field and then we also will be looking for a feasibility study from them as to the potential for raising the, that amount of money in the community um, there's also been a building subcommittee and I wanted to update you as to the work that they've been doing um, they've met several times since we've last met and they are were formed specifically to interview construction management firms to handle the renovation at the high school um, back in the late January um, we received 12 proposals from construction management firms we met and established criteria and a ranking process and narrowed it down to five finalists um, last Friday we conducted interviews um, we had a more extensive process that included um, 10 minutes of a presentation by the firms followed by about 45 minutes of a question and answer session where we had set questions we had criteria uh, there were ratings and then there was also weightings involved in the selection process and we did come up with a final uh, recommendation right now we're in the process of finalizing um, some questions that we had and I looked at we'll probably be presenting to both the town council and school board our recommendation at our march meetings and i especially just want to take this opportunity the subcommittee has done finished their work at this point but they did a great job and i wanted to thank uh, tom frisella uh, mike mcgovern paulina portria uh, jeff shed and especially uh, liam mcgraw who has who is our community member on the building committee and has quite extensive experience and provided us with a lot of very pertinent questions and considerations and, and made our job uh, my job much easier so thank you okay thanks elaine um the communication committee ann uh, the communication committee met on january 28th and for people watching who may not know this is a new committee of the board this year um, with the purpose of enhancing communication to and from the school board so we'll be trying this this year and see how we think it works and if it's something that we want to continue in the following years um, we talked about a couple of different ideas in terms of accomplishing that goal and i'll just sort of run through some of them briefly um, one of the things that we want to suggest is that um, school board members occasionally from time to time might attend some of the various staff meetings, workshop, in-service trainings, those kinds of things that are held at the, at the different schools, um, just as a way of getting information and understanding um, better what's really going on on a day-to-day -day basis. Another idea is more email um, communication and um, information on the website um, such as school board bios somebody has suggested might be helpful and informative for people to have on the website also there's a um, there is a link on the school website to the school board and we wanted to encourage staff to um, send out interesting things that are happening in their classrooms or at the school that they think might be of interest to the school board members to attend um, if it's appropriate and another idea was a school board mailbox that we wanted to make a recommendation to the board that we try um, 
a lot of people like to communicate via email. Not, not everybody likes to do that. Most people have that. Not all people do. Um, generally, people, when they send an email communication to the school board, it's fairly lengthy. We thought that it's a different way to communicate, a simpler way for some people. Um, and so we wanted to make a recommendation that we try that and put something in the schools and perhaps town hall and maybe the library as a way to get, um, just open that communication flow. I don't know, I don't, we need sort of just general support for that concept. Um, and then um, a couple of other things we discussed, we're having key administrators, the principals give a report, Gary gave a great report tonight, but other administrators who we don't routinely hear from, um, maybe at workshops we do, but the workshops are not aired. Um, so we wanted to make the recommendation that other administrators um, come maybe on an annual basis and give a report to us that, that would be televised for everyone to hear. And also possibly other teachers come who have been on sabbatical. We would really like to hear about that. We thought that the community might like to hear about their experiences. Or if there's a teacher who's doing some you know, special project or um, ongoing um, special teaching in their classroom that they'd like to share with the board and with the community, that might be really interesting for us to hear about at our meetings. Um, and um, the last thing was posting subcommittee minutes on the website. And Tom has said that he'll look into um, seeing how we can make that happen, just so that that information is accessible in a number of different places. Thank you. OK. Thank you, Ann. Can I ask a question? Yes. And w when do you think the com communication committee might be presenting to the board or to the um, you know, making the formal recommendations for a lot of the things that you itemized so that we might act on them and implement them? Oh, well, um, the <laughs> The two, the two of the things that we, that I mentioned, I mean, are, I mean, we can make that a formal recommendation now. I'm not sure because this isn't really a standing committee. What the, what we want the process to be for that. I mean, we can make a recommendation and have that voted on tonight. I mean, there are a couple. The, the two things that I mentioned were the school board mailbox and um, inviting administrators to come, administrators who don't already do this on an annual basis to give a report, as well as possibly other teachers, as we deem might be uh, informative. So I mean, those are sort of the two concrete things. I, do, do you want that now in the form of a? Do we, are you looking for a consensus? Well, I don't know, board? I haven't asked. I mean, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that we should be doing it tonight because it's theoretically not on the agenda. But, but I am thinking that there are some good things coming out of the committee. And I'd hate for them to get lost in the shuffle because we haven't, we as a total board have not acted on those things. So, you know, I don't know what kind of a process we would want to use, but I do think that we do need a process to bring the ideas of committees such as yours mm -hmm. to the table for, for action. Well, so our committee is actually not going to be meeting until March, the next committee meeting. So maybe um, after that, for the following board meeting, we could have that on the agenda and have recommendations on there. So, is that so you're saying for the April meeting then? Because we're not meeting again. I mean, some of these things, you know, we, uh, we could present formally next month mm -hmm. too. I think your your goal, your school board goal, was to have the communication committee and, and have a, a recommendation. So my suggestion would be once everything is finalized, to have a package that you might present to the board, which I think was your goal, um, mm -hmm. rather than piecemeal. It just makes okay. more sense. My only comment on that was I'd like to see things moving along. And I personally don't feel the need to wait for an in toto presentation. Why hold off? implementing a suggestion box, for example, waiting for all the other matters that are being discussed. Because there are other items that it may come to us in a recommendation, which will generate some conversation that is not necessarily positive. So that's, that's up to the board. <coughs> 
but that's my thought on it so then i guess we're saying do we want to bring some of these to the meeting next month or do we want to wait until after our march thirty and sort of bring a package of things then what what would people like to see well, well how many uh how many items are there i mean you're speaking of two right now um and so what what would the package look like well i mean i don't think it's going to be that enormous okay I, I mean, the things that I reported on last month and that we discussed in more detail that I sort of really mentioned again today, there's, there's nothing beyond those. Okay. Um, so I, I don't know, maybe there would be um, five to seven items that we would... That you would discuss at your March meeting and then bring to us... Normally in, discuss, yeah. And mm -hmm. bring to us in April. Mm -hmm. um, but there are several things that you could act on now and bring to us in March is what you're saying. Yeah, a couple things, just a few, the few things that I mentioned tonight, yep. So would people like those things that I mentioned that we wanted to make recommendations on next month or do they want it as a package in April? Which will only be a month later. Yeah. So. I, w I would support just putting together a, a one recommendation um, and having us look at it in April and um, really getting, you know, understanding how it's all going to work together and benefit the community and school board. Okay, we'll do that then. Because Thanks. we would see a package of what this communication committee is and mm -hmm. where you're headed. And, and actually, if we see it in April, you know, that only gives us um, two or three months of implementation for this year. So, yeah, I think that'll work. Okay, thanks. Okay. Okay, and um, now on to unfinished business, which is um, the consideration of the high school mission statement. And um, the high school mission statement has generated a lot of conversation over the past couple of months. Throughout all of the conversations that have taken place, which have been good, um, our goal has remained unchanged, and that is to develop an appropriate mission statement for our high school and for our community. And with that said, I'd like to um, um, have Jeff come up and talk about um, the mission statement as it is represented in our package. As the board is, is well aware, um, I've presented to you on behalf of the high school faculty our draft mission and expectation statement uh, two times before, I think it was. I did so after an extensive process uh, seeking input from students, parents, and the entire community. The first draft of our mission statement uh, did not contain the word diversity. What that draft did contain was language about respect, responsibility, teamwork, and treating others the way we would like to be treated, the ethical principles that are the uh, underpinning of diversity as a value in the school setting. At that meeting, however, the school board meeting a couple months ago, a very legitimate question, a great question, was raised about considering the addition of the word diversity to our mission and expectation statement. Accordingly, the high school faculty, who has no objection to the word diversity went back to work. We added diversity to the civic and social expectations portion of the mission statement. By including the language there, we subjected ourselves to a tight accountability mechanism contained in the accreditation standards of the New England Association of Schools and Colleges. I presented that, that second draft to the board last month. Since that time, a group of citizens has expressed a preference for including the word diversity in the mission statement portion of the mission and expectation statement. Uh, this, this input, this additional input, prompted us to look again at where we were, and as the mission committee talked about this, we again expressed our support for the word diversity and the value of diversity. We adopted a proposal for an amendment to our mission statement that explicitly incorporates the word diversity. That is option one in the one-page document that you have before you. In the course of our meeting, however, uh, we had a conversation about what exactly the value is of 
embracing diversity in an educational setting. We came to the conclusion that it has to do really with two things. The first is establishing a climate of respect and fairness for all of our students and staff. And second, it has to do, I think, with the growth that we all experience when we encounter, we welcome, and we embrace, even though we may not necessarily agree with people of different backgrounds, experiences, and ideas. This understanding of diversity is, is consistent, I think, with definitions of diversity that one finds among diversity advocacy groups, which speak to the issue of how we handle differences, whether those differences are racial, ethnic, religious, socioeconomic, or based on sexual orientation, or any of a number of other categories. It was that underlying notion of what the value is of embracing diversity in a school setting that attracted us to the idea of actually expressing precisely that in our mission statement. So we came up with a second option for an amendment to our mission statement that said that it would be a part of our mission to develop learners who embrace people and ideas that are different. Both these, and that's option number two, that's on the one page document. Both these versions of the mission statement, option number one and option number two, were presented to the CEHS faculty based on the recommendation of the mission committee, and both versions were approved with nearly unanimous support. In accordance with the wishes of the mission committee and the vote of the faculty, I presented both versions of the mission statement amendment to the school board. Since that time, the school board has, I understand, or at least some members, have received additional community input to the effect that there is a strong preference for option one instead of option two. The entire process leading to the ultimate adoption of a mission and expectation statement at Cape Elizabeth High School has been open to community input at every point in time. The staff has welcomed that input and continues to do so. Consistent with that openness and responsiveness and with the faculty's overwhelming support in favor of either alternative in front of the school board tonight, I am withdrawing option number two from consideration and I would urge the board to adopt option number one. And I can answer any questions that the board may have. Any comments or questions for Jeff? None. Well, I, I, uh, I think it's absolutely um, a comment on you as administrator of the high school and your ability to kind of weave a very challenging discussion with a number of very different kinds of people. Um, this, this is a tough discussion. I think that this also reflects not only, I think what the board had originally recommended for the school to revisit this, but also the importance that this has with the number of people in the community people who actually knew what was going on and people who are also just learning right now, perhaps. So I thank you for shepherding this kind of process through because, as I mentioned to you perhaps last month, that I do understand the challenges associated with getting faculty buy-in. Um, and it's tough and certainly it, it requires you to be quite persistent. So I thank you very much for doing this. Kevin? Jeff, in your presentation, you have articulated a definition of diversity that I find rather acceptable, more than acceptable. And it is the first time that I have heard a specific definition. And I would hope that moving forward, that definition will go from being oral to being codified in your additional work, such as in the rubrics of determining whether or not we are meeting diversity goals. I don't believe we can attempt to measure how we are achieving goals unless we have a common district-wide acceptable definition. Um, but since you have articulated that, um, I'm very pleased. And I also congratulate you and the faculty on dealing with a somewhat difficult issue. So thank, thank you. you. Anyone else? OK, 
Okay. Thank you very much, Jan. Yeah. Um, is there a motion to accept, Jeff? Kevin? I'd move that we adopt the mission statement as recommended by the principal and the faculty and as presented. And I would further like to include in that motion a request that the definition of diversity be converted into the document, be, be included in the documentation somewhere so that we all have a clear and concise definition. Is there a second? Oh, I have a question. Is that part of the motion? Yes, it is. I, I think it is. It, it, is it not required by NEAS that there was going to be that rubric because it also appears in the civil and social expectations? My concern there goes beyond the requirements of NEAS. We have to develop a district-wide mission statement that includes diversity language. Mm -hmm. That diversity language has to work its way through all of our documentation. And I don't think that we have, based on the emails I've seen, the discussions we've had, I don't think we have a common definition of the word diversity. I think we all have our sort of, it's a no-brainer, we understand intuitively what it means, but I don't want this district to be in a position where two different individuals at either end of a political ideology can dictate to us what diversity means. I think we have to adopt for ourselves what it means and be very clear to ourselves. And that's, that's a process that happened through um, you know, the future direction planning, those people clearly raise the issue of diversity, okay? And that's something we have to be responsive to. And to me, the first step, this is not the logical first step in responding to those folks. <coughs> it just happened to happen that way. Um, and it's a good first step, but now let's expand it. And in order to do that, I believe that we need a universally understood definition of diversity. Well, I, we can't, I guess it needs to be seconded for further discussion. Right, it does. Okay, so is, is there a second to Kevin's motion to, as I understand it, further define diversity somewhere in the document of the mission statement. Is that correct, Kevin? If not necessarily in the document, for the district. For the district. Okay. Is there a second for that motion? Okay. There is not. So um, someone can amend the motion. Someone can? Someone can amend Kevin's motion. Or if you make a motion. Or they can make a motion. Yeah, I, I, case, I will amend my motion at this point in time to simply adopt the CEHS mission and expectation statement as presented by Jeff Shedd on behalf of the faculty in the high school. Period. So, I need a second. Wait, wait, so you're saying adopt What's what here? Jeff is, okay. So now we need a second. Seconds. Ian. Okay. All those in favor? Any discussion. Any other discussion? Oh, I'm sorry. It, yes. Any other discussion? Well, what I would offer is the reason why I would support this without uh, the previous motion made is there is nobody in the scholarly literature or practitioners associated with the diversity that would ever offer the definition of diversity. It is an ongoing argument. It is an ongoing definition. There is ongoing dialogue. There are courses where people are studying this. There are people who make their livings trying to educate other people about it. And in the process, they're also informing themselves about it. So part of the reason why I would prefer to offer this as our, our mission statement, 
as opposed to supporting anything alternative to this is because this allows the school to define, to operationalize it in the context of Cape Elizabeth. Marshwood School, SAD 60, SAD 61, uh, Scarborough, they all have the phrase diversity, welcoming climates of diversity. And my sense is, although I've not contacted any of them, my sense is they're making quite a bit of effort to try to break that down to make it specifically unique to their school district. And so I'm not comfortable going any further than what this mission, option number one, suggests. And that would be the only point I'd make about it. Okay, and that is the motion, and it was seconded, exactly. and that is what is on the table right now. Any further comments? No? No? Okay, then let's take a vote. All those in favor? Seven, zero. Okay, thank you. Um, now we will move on to uh, new business. The first thing on our list is consideration of the superintendent's recommendation to athletic fee positions. Um, I would like to recommend the following uh, individuals for athletic fee positions. Uh, returning high school coaching and not in, in make a note that it's not nominations, these are recommendations. Uh, Joe Henriksen, varsity softball. Bill Rabadou, assistant softball. Sam Coughlin, JV softball. Ben Raymond, varsity boys lacrosse. Charlie Carroll, assistant boys lacrosse. Andy Strout, varsity boys tennis. Ben Putnam, JV boys tennis. Susan Ray, varsity girls tennis. David Weatherby, boys track. Jeremy LaRose, girls track. Uh, new high school nominations. Uh, Todd Day, uh, Varsity Baseball, and uh, what you received in your packet today, uh, Aaron Filio, uh, Varsity Football. At the middle school, um, for middle school coaches, Terry Long, Girls Assistant Basketball, uh, Murray Barton, Nordic Skiing, and Ruth Hall, Nordic Skiing. Is that, that's everybody? Yes. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. Is it Murray Barton or is it Muggy? I don't know. I just know what I'm Lady reading on the sheet. Is Murray is his real name? <laughs> I, that may be true. I don't believe that is true. I thought, I thought it was something totally different. But are we talking about Muzzy Barton? Yes. <laughs> okay. And I apologize to Professor. Okay. That's who we're talking about. Okay, do we have a motion to um, the superintendent's recommendations? Jennifer? Yeah, as long as Nancy checks and makes sure we have the correct name on it. I believe that the names were sent to Mary. Right. Oh, that's what it says on yeah. here. But um, anyway, I'll check. Thank you. Okay, so. Thank you. Okay, so you're making a motion to accept the recommendations for the athletic fee positions. Um, a second. Seconded. Anne. Um, any comments or other questions? Okay, all those in favor? Seven, zero. Uh, next on our list is, are the recommendations to co-curricular fee, fee one, positions. One, one recommendation for a co-curricular fee a position that's a mentor for a new teacher, Kelly Hassan. Okay. Is there a motion? Elaine? I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation for co-curricular. Okay. And a second? Second. Kevin, all those in favor? I, are any comments or questions? Sorry. Nothing. Okay. All those in favor? Seven, zero. And next? the nominations to administrative positions for 2003-2004? I'm sorry. Is four that five. right? Four or five, right? Okay. Um. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> sorry. It says 2004 and five on the sheet. Do, do we need, I don't know if we need yes. to think about, maybe it was appropriate 2003-04. And the, I was just reading um, from the agenda. But again, this is something that each year um, 
the administrators at this time each year are nominated to the position obviously these are all subject to the approval of the budget and we're hoping that all these positions remain in the budget because we have such a fine administrative team but I would like to nominate with pleasure the following administrators for 2004-2005 Tom Eismeyer Pine Cove School Nancy Hutton principal at the middle school Jeff Shedd principal at the high school assistant principals John Casey at the middle school and Mark Tinkham at the high school district wide positions Claire Labrie director of special education Paulina Portria business manager Gary Lenoy technology coordinator Sarah Simmons facilitator of professional development and curriculum Keith Weatherby point 75 athletic administrator and Sue Weatherby community services director do we have a motion to accept these nominations for the administrative positions I move that we accept the superintendent's nomination for administrative positions okay a second Elaine any comments or questions Kevin I continue to question why we are nominating and electing Sue Weatherby as community services director relative to other conversations we've had we do not fix her salary salary Tom does in fact um, is her supervisor because of the school bus situation um, community service is not governed by school board policy um, community service programs are not voted on by the school board um, fees for community services are not established by the school board and we have seen in recent policy conversations that the inclusion of community services in the school issues has created confusion um, in how we ought to deal with this so I'm just using this as an open door to editorialize I think part of the reason um, in the history of it Kevin is um, yes it, it is my responsibility to supervise um, that position um, I think also um, the transportation issue as you know is something that that is part directly related to the school the other piece has to do with funding um, with the adult education portion that if there is not a link somehow to the school department then whatever money we get from the state for adult education we wouldn't be able to get because there wouldn't be that connection so you know we can probably in the future take a look at maybe breaking it down that we own a certain percentage of it um, to make it more accurately reflect what actually is happening what percentage is community services what percentage is schools that might be the way to go in the future so what percentage of the time is for transportation what percentage of the time is for adult education and maybe we approve the position at point whatever percent of that position and the rest is owned by the town I mean that's a good discussion to have um, rather than just say this is the way it's always been I think that since I moved the nominations that it's clear that I approve of them but I right. do, do agree That's with a, you it's a good conversation that I think it's a good conversation and it's long past having that time to have that conversation um, <coughs> but there are other areas that that we share also with well, the town the one, technology yeah. so I mean so you're it, it's a much bigger discussion than um, community services Okay. Okay. So, where were we? Um, it's moved and seconded. Moved and seconded. Okay. Any other com question? Kathy? How long have we had a position of facilitator of professional development and curriculum? That's Sarah Simmons, and sh this has been the three years. This be the, I think third year. third year. Completing the second year, or third? No, third. Third year. Isn't it? I think it's the third. third year. It is the third year. Thank you. It's at least a <laughs> two and a half. We can okay. Any other questions? Comments? Okay. All those in favor? Seven zero. Okay. Um, and actually, before we um, move to enter executive session I would just like to go over the uh, dates of our upcoming meetings
school board workshop tuesday february twenty fourth at the high school library at seven o'clock will be on the school budget school board workshop saturday february twenty eighth will be our all day budget session from eight thirty to about two fifteen here in the council chambers policy subcommittee um, as Ann had mentioned, I think, um, Tuesday, March 2nd at noon here in the Jordan Conference Room. The next building committee meeting will be Wednesday, March 3rd at 7 o'clock here in the Jordan Conference Room. Uh, the next finance subcommittee followed by our regular school board meeting will be March 9th. Um, again here. And now if we can have a motion to end public session and go into um, executive discussion at the superintendent's request to discuss a personnel issue. So moved. Okay. And a second. Jennifer, all those in favor? Seven, zero. And we will not be returning to public session. Okay.